Last but not least, please welcome Dr. Rod Carr from the University of Canterbury. Uh, Anamana and Iwi Tanakoto Kata. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, the University of Canterbury has a little uh, slogan. We all have a byline uh, Tangata Tua, Tangata Ora. The people prepared to make a difference. And we've heard lots, uh, and I'm sure earlier today, even though I wasn't able to join you, you've heard lots about buildings and about broken things. Uh, I thought I would spend my small time with you reminding us all about the people thing. Um, the University of Canterbury started at the Art Centre in uh, 1873 with four academic staff and 80 students. Um, I'm interested to know that they've got 18,500 square metres of space because we wouldn't fit back, fit back there now with our 13,000 students and 2,000 staff. Uh, the university drags its students from all over New Zealand and all over the world. And it is that richness and that tapestry of those different people from different places be they staff or be they students, that brings to the city connectedness and connections, which is why so many cities in the world aspire to have world-class universities. Over half our students come from outside the Canterbury region. Over half our students come here for the university. They bring with them not only their skills and interests and motivations, they, of course, bring resources with them. The university contributes about $1.5 billion a year to the regional GDP, but that's the money thing. What it really contributes is that vibrancy. 70% of our students arrive here at the age of 18 or 19. Many will go back to other places, but many choose to stay. The university staff are also drawn from all over the world. Over half our staff have qualifications from offshore. In fact, the University of Canterbury is ranked among the top 20 internationalised universities on the planet. Now, that comes from a history of being open and engaged and engaging. International surveys of students show that this city and this university is welcoming. Sometimes I don't think we're welcoming enough. But we certainly are seen by many of our international students as supportive of their aspirations. The university staff engage widely in the community and the city and in many ways do it unnoticed. But the earthquakes provided opportunities to be more explicit and more noticed in some of those contributions. Clearly, some are obvious. The staff of the university contributed to a better understanding of the geology of the ground on which we stand, the built structures that we've erected on them, the planning for what we might do next. But over 200 research projects were initiated in the 18 months after the earthquake, as all our disciplines and their curiosity about the world around them and how it had changed developed research programs about the impacts on communities, on small and medium-sized businesses, on our psychology and well-being. Indeed, universities contribute so much to their communities that we are in danger sometimes of taking them for granted, particularly those universities that are of a world-class standing. Over 16 of the disciplines at the University of Canterbury are in the top 200 in the world, and in the top 100 in the world, we have history, geography, law and education. Yes, we are known for our engineering. Civil and structural engineering ranks as 19th in the world. These are achievements over 140 years of academic endeavour. And throughout that time, it is the community which has had to support the institution so that the institution can support its community. We were reminded of that, in case we had forgotten, by our own students, who after the earthquake were able to self-initiate support for the community using technical skills that in some cases the local civil defence authorities were able to borrow. Our students were able to marshal over 10,000 workers in the field using cell phones, set up a data centre and call centre with over 100 seats in the space of five days. They didn't ask permission, and nobody told them 
They couldn't do it, so they did. The university, through its College of Arts, has established Seismic, a federated repository, an enormous resource of digitized information about the city and its experiences, a resource that will be the art gallery and museum of the future. Not forgetting, of course, that not only did the university spin out the art centre, spin out the botanical gardens, spin out Lincoln University, but universities are known often not for what they capture on their balance sheets, but what they give away. The University of Canterbury will continue to play its part in the city's recovery. We will do our own little bit of building restoration. In fact, we have 260,000 square metres of space. All of the lettable space in the CBD of Christchurch in 2011 amounted to about 420,000 square metres. We provide accommodation to over 2,000 residential students on our campus. So we need to play our part in the city's recovery. We need to ensure we attract back and go beyond the number of students that we had so that they too can benefit from the huge resource that is available. But we also need to ensure that our teaching is informed by research and is relevant to the needs of our community. We need to make sure our students have opportunities for relevant work experience while they study. We know they want to engage in the community and we need to support those opportunities. We know we're internationally connected. We need to make those connections stronger for all our students. And we need to develop the bicultural knowledge and awareness so that our graduates can play their part in a bicultural nation and a multicultural world. Of course, we'll teach them their disciplines, how to be lawyers, how to be accountants, and how to be engineers. But we'll also teach them how to build on their creativity and their ability to innovate. We will create opportunities and environments for peer-supported learning, and with your help as members of our community, we will attract another generation thousands of young people who will populate this city and support this region to become one of the fastest growing and most sustainable parts of the Asia-Pacific in the 21st century. Thanks for your time.